Haven't done this in a while. Uh, just setting up the live stream. Let's make sure that I'm on YouTube. Oh, we're going to go against Armored Skeptic and his crop circles, I guess. Let's see if it's picking up on YouTube. It should be. Oh, what's going on here? Says I'm live. Let's see. Ah, good old sticker mule. You buy from them once and you get them forever. All right. I do have sound on the live stream, so that's good. And I can actually see the chat. I have two monitors now. It's all good. So in case anybody's wondering, I'm Christina Blackfeather. Um, I um, do pretty much random art, anything. Um, portraits, oil paints, acrylics, whatever. Um, and I decided today, first off, I'm going to add a couple more pieces to... Um, Hern the Hunter here. Just glue some more random stuff on him. So yeah, he's pretty good sized. He's a little heavy, but I'm gonna I found some more odds and ends to add to him. He is made out of cardboard and uh, uh hi hi sigh and um napkins from um uh, that i saved from uh uh take out and stuff but i also have a huge uh thing of white napkins here too i used the tan ones for him because it gave me a better color base to work on but yeah you can see there's some leftover mountain dew boxes there um <laughs> I uh, the next one I'm thinking of doing is actually a kelpie so I want to do a full-sized horse skull but I may do a couple paper dragons in between because I have to figure out how to create the form oh thank you <laughs> I like it I, I want to be able to create a realistic skull. So to be able to do that, I need to figure out how I'm going to pattern the cardboard pieces. Um, I don't have a real skull, horse skull with me to go off of. I have a cow skull. I got several deer skulls and stuff, but horse I do not have yet. Um, considering that they're one of my totems, I would really like to be able to get one. Um, I'm one of those people, I'm not afraid of bones, I'm not afraid of anything like that. I uh, managed to get a couple skull, uh, um, skunk jaw bones from my daughter, which I'm going to pair up. She found them, so I'm going to pair them up with uh, opossum bones, um, which will be really cool. Oh, I, I can sculpt one, but considering the size of a horse, that's going to be pretty big. Um, so I'm kind of trying to avoid doing that because I would like to get a full three-dimensional sculpture out of cardboard and then do um, the paper mache over top of it, kind of like I did this one. Um, and if I do it right, then I have something I can hang on my my wall. And maybe I don't need to get a horse skull at that point. But I've been studying a lot of the anatomy. And I mean, I had horses for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hugh? Let me look that up. Okay. 
<laughs> hold them up in my hand here like this. Alrighty. Let's open YouTube in another window. Yeah, I've been following a few. Um, a few different ones, especially I've been running into the uh, Welsh tradition of um, of um, where people will go around as the horse as a horse i can't remember the name of it now over the holidays i'll have to look it up all i'm doing is finding random people as wire artists yeah i'm not finding it i'm not going to wrench yeah marie lude I'm not going to wrench random people. I only have certain people that are wrenched in my chat. Um, two of them are no longer with us. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have uh, the mud brooker and um, coffee artist and uh, my wife wrenched. I'm very tight about that. So um, if you just give me the exact name of his channel I should be able to find it but it looks like my hot glue gun is good enough here thought I'd show a necklace I did get this one off of eBay and this was um, indigenous made and I really like it I think it's cool it's glass beads and uh, nice big chunk of antler there get this out of the way and glue him down first and then after that yeah um you can also comment under the video later okay kayak asaurus okay awesome let me look Found it immediately. Holy cow. <laughs> Destroying his first iPhone for art. <laughs> oh my God. I think I still got my. Oh, I have. I'm already subscribed. Okay. Yeah, I know he does the pterodactyl, the flying pterodactyls and stuff. Yeah, he was one I was looking up on sculpturing stuff. So. I did. Oh my God. Uh, hi, Tabitha. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now let's see if I can turn this camera around here. Yeah, that's the cat bed ignored. It's kind of messy. We are going to change angles and I'm sorry for the camera quake here. I don't have multiple cameras to set up unfortunately. Um, I have a webcam on my computer, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to use if I want to do detail. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Because, well, Matt Powell's a dink. Um, yeah. <laughs> and my wife is trans, so it's like that just, oh, he infuriated me so bad. I was considering a good butt kicking on that guy, I swear, in Minecraft. <laughs> well, let's see if the, yeah, this is showing up. I'm trying to figure out. I found this knot of wood. I'm trying to figure out where to put it. Oh, yeah, it has. Matt Powell is, oh, my gosh, he's just terrible. Well, I I appreciate you being on my channel. That is fantastic. 
I was so thrilled when you first came on the channel, too. I'm just looking at him. I know it partly blocks the eye, but this is the side that he usually lays down and hides with. Let's see what this looks like from the front. Ah. Hmm. I can't really zoom out. I can lift the camera up, but I'll be doing more detailed work later. Oh, that's actually better on the antler, I think. Don't drop the heat gun. I like that on the antler. Things I find in my yard. Okay, I'm gonna bump this up some more. Sorry again for the camera quake. Now it's complaining about that I have to rotate the phone. Oh my God. All right. Sorry guys. I'm having more trouble with this thing today than I normally do. There. That's better. So, whoops. <laughs> Hazards of uh, dropping things. Yeah, I really like that up here. Is it still given an image? Let's see. Is this complaining about my camera orientation? Testing again? Yeah. Okay. So it's working. It's just YouTube's complaining. Let them complain. And occasionally there may be a little wobble from the phone. I apologize. That's a perfect spot right there. Look at that. Now I gotta be careful. I have fried myself a couple of times. Hot glue really, really hurts. There we go. Angle him this way so the glue doesn't run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you see that um, planar walk transitioned? She looks pretty good, too. My wife can't do her own makeup because she's almost blind now, but so I do her makeup when we go out anywhere fancy, like the Renaissance Festival or something and a couple of weddings and I've done her makeup and nobody recognized her and she she was surprised that you know she doesn't have the greatest self-esteem sometimes so she wonders if she passes or anything and I you know when you do the right makeup it it works but it's hard for me to do it half the time because I work <laughs> I'd love to be able to do her stuff daily and her hair and everything, but you yeah, just deal. The glue is so hot that I can feel it on the other side of the antler. <laughs> I was going to do this stream yesterday, but I just wasn't feeling it. Well, that's the thing, too, is it's a matter of trying to be close to the person that you see yourself as. Um, for years to survive some of the stuff I'd been through in life, um, I did a lot of writing. 
And I'd look in the mirror and I'd see myself as the Elvin character that I wrote about. I didn't see my I didn't see my own reflection in the mirror. So kind of a dysphoria there, but um it, it just couldn't be helped. And you know, you're trying to be the real person that you are, and when you've got somebody, you know, just kind of slamming you about it it's ridiculous like I just I just had it out with um, another person named G-Man who not only was insulting about my art because I think he's just overall jealous but that set me down into some depression because he was accusing me of just doing coloring but he also is one who's threatened um, to uh, take a... Uh, this might be too brittle. He's threatened to take a um, baseball bat with barbed wire to uh, um, any uh, trans woman he runs into. And he did that on YouTube. He pulled the video down, of course, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue the inside of this just to strengthen it, and then I'll glue it on the dragon later. Just to give it a little bit more solid base. I have a catalpa tree out in the backyard and um, it's been dropping seed pods and some of them are like three feet long, but this was a smaller piece that I found in the grass, which means I'm going to have seeds all over and that thing reproduces like bunny rabbits. <laughs> Okay, if I have to melt that later, I will. We're gonna shut that off. Maybe if I learn how to work the on-off switch. <laughs> okay, so at least that one piece on there, he's gonna dry. And that did come out pretty cool. I like the extension on the antlers. So, I'm going to set him over here. I'm going to leave this on the table for now. I'm trying to move the workspace a little closer. I'm not in my art studio yet. Because I just got a new job, I have to rearrange all sorts of things now. But um, it'll work. Doggone it, I keep bumping that. Oh, I faced down G-Man I don't know how many times. I was in his live chat and he was just terrible and he's going on and on about the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, and he was just so obnoxious this was last week i was in his live chat just to i i admit i was in there just to give him crap because he likes to brag about how great of a christian he is and everything and i probably had it coming a little bit but then he started attacking me about my art and how he wants to debate me and i need to give up my pentacle and all of this stupid crap, and I was just, I'd had enough. So I did a post on my own channel about it, and I was like, yeah, come on, G-Man, I dare you. Come and draw something. <laughs> Try that. And, you know, he harassed a friend of a lot of people, even up until the day she passed away. Um, because she was a lesbian, although celibate, and she was Catholic, and he just tore into her all the time. And I don't like to 
let people uh, forget that. <laughs> yeah, I might, I think I'm going to coat um, uh, Hernan's eyes with resin so that they shine. Um, yes, I am. Yeah, I'm guts at Gibbon tier. <laughs> But, um, yeah, anyway, I, I think adding a little shine to those eyes would work, but they are creepy because it does look like he follows you. Um, if you move the head, it almost looks like the eyes turn to watch you. It's, it's pretty cool. Ah, uh, I see where I missed some painting, I think, unless that's the underside of the scales. Might be. I'm looking at an image on the computer here. So what I thought I would do today is just show the process and making some of these little pendants. Um, I wanted to uh, just do some stuff. I know there's uh, some people that are in the Therian community that craft and stuff. And I just thought I'd show them a little different way of doing some of these pendants. Plus, I'm going to use up the last of my creative paper clay here. I had bought this when I was working on Hearn and unfortunately it's molding. So I got to take care of it. But um, just to show a little bit different sculpture techniques, um, the paper clay, yeah, it's $13, but that one block lasts. I mean, there's a lot of it. And yeah, it is, if it's got mold, it's not gonna sculpt. So I just take that piece and toss it. And it takes a little while for these to dry, but you can do the details with water and stuff. And I did a couple of goddess ones too. And I didn't sand them. You can sand this clay once it's dry and it's fine to do so, but I wanted the rough texture. And so like, here's a deer track that I did as a, 3D also looks like a heart in a way. I didn't do it imprinted like a track. I just did it as a paw print type thing. Um, this one is uh, the uh, fox or coyote. I have to add the claw marks to it yet in paint. So that'll be one we're doing today. Um, I wanted to show on a simpler one how to set rings in because I saw one one person that wanted to make their Therian pendant and you know they just did the one side painted it white and um, painted the image on there which was fine but um, the one thing that they did not do is they had the loop for their pendant was facing this way and if you have it on a cord and the holes going like this you either have to do a second loop through that hole or your pendant's going to flip flop all the time because it'll be on its side on your body and you want the hole to go sideways across the pendant so that it just you know it'll lay flat so i was going to show a couple different techniques for doing that um, you can sculpt this around a paper clip. It's one of the things that'll work nicely. Just make sure the parts of the paper clip don't show except for the loop. So you would have the paper clip inside the loop above and then sculpt around it. A little bit of water to smooth this out. These will crack a little bit when they dry, but you can take water and go back over them again if you want, or just sand them down. This one is not doing what I want it to. It was too dry. Um, the same thing can be done with salt dough, but salt dough you have to bake, but it's easy to make and it's fun to work with. Just keep it away from your dog. <laughs> I um, had a Chesapeake Bay Retriever for years. 
<laughs> I made a whole bunch of salt dough Christmas ornaments, and they were all cowboy Christmas ornaments. She, I had them drying on the top of the stove on the tray. I come back inside from whatever it was I was doing, and the dog's got a little bit of blood on her mouth. I'm like, oh, my God, what the heck? What's wrong with her tooth? Because she injured her gum is what happened. And I go into the kitchen, and the tray wasn't on the floor. But half of the ornaments were missing, and then I find a piece of the ornament on the floor in another part of the room. And the dog had reached up on the stove and had ate some of them. She thought they were biscuits. And by the amount that she ate, I'd say she enjoyed them. <laughs> this is the same dog who would stand on top of the stove and grab the loaf of bread off of the refrigerator. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, yeah, Sass, her name was Sassy. There, there was a reason. Um, Sassy Lady Charlemagne, she was a purebred. Okay, so this is one of the little hooks I got. I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, you can get these anywhere, even the hardware store. I don't know if they're this tiny at the hardware store, but they're pretty cheap. It's like a couple, couple uh, bucks for a package of 50 of them. Um, so we'll do one like that. Again, make sure the loop is sideways. If you want to later, you can reinforce with um, like E6000 or super glue or something like that. I push it in a little farther too, just so that loop is in there just nice and tight. This one, I'm not gonna sculpt on this one. We'll do that on the next one. So these take a few days to dry and they dry pretty solid. So we'll set that over there. I'm going to grab another one and show you what to do with a jump ring because jump rings work really well too. Let's just work in the clay till you get it the way you want it. Dip your fingers in water. Hey, sweetie. So I was just you trying to... any jump rings in this house. No, no jump rings at all. A couple of chain mailers. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. No jump rings. I want to see G-Man make a chain mail dress and then brag about how he's better than a professional artist. That would be funny. We've made two of them. Okay, I'm just trying to get it. It might still crack when it dries. We'll see. Okay. And I, the reason, part of the reason I'm not sanding these down or anything is I like for a more primitive style. I like having the um, the roughness. Okay, so here's just a regular jump ring. You want to have a larger size, not the tiny, tiny ones for necklaces. I did not close this because I want that extra surface area for the clay to grab onto. So you get the hole, the gap in the ring inside the clay. And that just gives a little bit more space for the clay to bite. Make sure the ring is nice and straight as far as the hole going sideways again. And this one, you know, because you might not be able to get the clay in there smoothly, you can take a large sewing needle like for yarn 
and just kind of smooth it out. Or you can use a toothpick or a chopstick, end of a paintbrush, anything that'll fit in that hole. So that's that one. Smooth it out a little more. And I think what we're going to do on this one, so I'm going to grab a little bit more clay, and we're going to do a horse hoof design on this one. Let's make sure yeah, the camera is covering the right spot. So wet the surface a little bit. This is going to be a more of a 3D one. So I'm not carving into the clay. I'm actually adding on. Squish it down a little bit. Take your needle, get it a little wet, and you start kind of smoothing along the sides just to lock it in place a little bit. Another, another thing you could do is like you do with re uh, regular clay where you notch the surface, you scratch it in a crosshatch pattern or basket pattern and then do the same thing on the piece you're adding and then um, uh, use some slips. So what that is is just very, very wet clay that acts like glue between the two pieces. If you're doing larger pieces with this air dry clay. Okay. Hi, Sophia. Welcome. Um, I have uh, Hearn the Hunter drying right now. Um, I added another piece to him. Okay. So right now I am... Um, trying to sculpt a horse hoof print. <laughs> Just showing how to do some um, more primitive uh, Therian style uh, pendants. And I am trying to do a three-dimensional hoof print on this one, um, raised base relief of it instead of um, just carving in. I am using um, creative paper clay for this. I had some leftover and once it gets exposed to air, it can mold. So I'm trying to use up what I got before all of it gets gross. So right now I'm just taking the wet needle and smoothing out some of this. And it's not going to be perfect. And that's okay. Whoop. Scrape some of this off. Yeah, and see, I had an air bubble in there I wasn't prepared for. So we'll do that again. Because a horse hoof print is still going to be more flat if the horses had their feet trimmed, um, either by a person or by going out in the wild and, you know, running over rough terrain and everything. They'll naturally trim. This is why I like the sewing needle because it's got that extra hole in there and that helps me scrape these and flatten them out. 
Oh, this might not work. I think I may have made it too round. Bugger. Grr. Arg. There, it's smoothing out. Yeah, as soon as you have horses that have those really long feet and everything, they have not had care. So I want to make sure that this looks like a decently trimmed hoof. I did this one to myself. <laughs> it's usually how it goes. Oops. I should have flattened this out to begin with. Okay. Now, back to doing the frog. That's what this, there's a cartilage type piece right in the center center bottom of the hoof when you pick a horse's foot up and you look at it. And that's called the frog. And it's just an extra bit of cushion on their foot. So right now I'm trying to get it nice and neat. Okay, I'll wet my finger again. If this doesn't work out so good, I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. I end up so messy. Then the frog also has an extra divot right there too. Horse used to be a multi-toed animal. Technically, they are um, where the hawk and the splinter are located. <laughs> you'll find an extra <coughs> bit of hoof that has to be trimmed um, up further on the leg, and that's a leftover toe from when they were multi-toed. That's actually looking better. Let's uh, try and add a little bit back on there maybe. Didn't quite get frog shaped right. It is sometimes a little harder to do three dimensional sculpt like this versus just carving in. More smoothing here. Figured I'd do something a little different today. Then we're going to add 
line here. Just to denote there's a difference between the wall and the wall of the hoof and the inner uh, structure. And you can actually see a line from that. And that's why I made that marking there. And I'm just smoothing out the rest. And that one's done. Again, very rough, very primitive looking, and that's what I want. And on these pendants, you can do the Therian symbol on the back. You can either carve it in if you want or just paint it, which is what I'm going to be doing on these is just painting. So that's that one. Um, let's do... Oh, uh, I already got a bear. Oh, that one that they only did half of the cow hoof, really? Oh, squirrel would be fun. Uh, squirrels. We have to have a squirrel removal party. They're in the ceiling of my bathroom. They got in a pipe, chewed their way through it, and uh, they're between the floor of the upstairs and the ceiling of the bathroom. They're not in the attic. And they've already made a mess. They haven't gotten much past that pipe, but it's very, very aggravating. So, to help with our aggravation, I got my wife a squirrel Valentine's Day card. <laughs> and now I'm going to do a squirrel pen paw print pendant. You are squirrel obsessed. I'm squirrel frustrated is what it is. <laughs> You're squirrely. I'm squirrely, yes. Oh, this just gave me an idea too. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Might have to save. Oh, I will have to save painting that one for another day. Oh, somebody can use this idea if they want. Do a shape like this that's more rounded on the top, flat on the inside. And on the inside, you can do the Therian symbol, a turtle paw print over it. And then on the rounded side, do the turtle shell. So if anyone wants to do that, otherwise I will be making some myself. But yeah. That's actually pretty cute. I think I might save this one for that. That is so awesome. Just had it pop in my head. I like it. All right. Still needs to have a ring though. I'd like to use a paper clip, but I don't have one. This one would be good for having a paper clip in it. Actually, you'd have to bend part of the paper clip though, because if you did that, paper clip going flat this way would have your loop go in the wrong direction. So you'd have to twist part of it. There, again, sunk in there. So yeah, that one's gonna be a turtle shell cause I like that idea. <laughs> Free for anybody to use. Before I do the squirrel print, sometimes depending on the animal, 
Um, some animals, it will be harder to get the teeth, especially like wolves or anything that's protected. If that is your totem, though, or that is the animal you identify with, I'm trying to kind of set this up for non-Therians too, but this is all great, great for anyone who's learning about animal totems or anything like that, is to just use the paper clay and sculpt your own tooth. There is going to be some, some uh, curve. The canine, of course, is going to be thicker. I'd have to find one of my horse teeth that I've got somewhere and dig that out. Now this one, you could put a metal loop if you want to. Otherwise, you can just take your needle, take the uh, dull side first, the end with the loop. Make sure you've got it going through really well. And in the middle, run it back through the other direction. Turn the needle a bit. Okay, then go with the big end of the needle back through the hole, wiggle it around a little bit, smooth it a little, and let it dry. There's gonna be your tooth. You can paint it however you want it to look. I did the same thing with this goddess figure. I just ran the needle through the hole Nice and easy one to work, to make. I do have hemp necklaces I made that have real teeth. Um, these are great for, for using with hemp. Um, sometimes it's hard to get leather thong uh, that is thin enough to go through there. Um, if you go to a craft store, uh, they'll have a, uh, products made by a company called Tandy Leather. They sometimes will have one millimeter or less round leather thong that you can use. Uh, sometimes though, that can get very brittle. So be careful with that. Yarn, of course, would fall apart. Hemp is the best material, but make sure um, you take it off at night and you um, let it air dry. Sometimes putting them in a silk bag is worth it, especially if they're really expensive hemp necklaces. I have some with some pendants that are not cheap. Um, depends on the pendant, I find. Uh, but these look fantastic if you get some bone beads glass wood um they end up looking really nice with that i i would avoid plastic because it kind of um detracts from the natural feel of the necklace when you get it done Just smoothing that out. This one's going to be the squirrel paw. All right. Let's put another loop in there. This is something very relaxing to do while you're watching TV and stuff too, or watching Netflix or whatever. Now this paw print, I am going to do carving in. Couldn't find my needle, it was right there. <laughs> okay. And don't forget to hit the like button and share and all that good stuff. Subscribe if you haven't. Squirrel paw print's interesting. 
So I'm just using the larger end of the needle to kind of dig in a little bit. And I forgot where I was looking. All right. Squirrel toes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this on a really old abused uh, silicone baking mat. This mat has seen better days. Okay, squirrel toes are more rounded at the top. I don't know why squirrel toes sound so funny right now. And what you'll do is after you've gotten some of these carved and they're dried, then you would um, paint the inside of the paw print. So it'll stand out. And if you use something as as a base for you to work on, um, like a good hard plastic uh, glass dish um, or uh, the silicone baking mats like I've got right here, uh, that means when the pendants are drying that they'll you can pick them up. They won't stick to it. If you have like newspaper down or something, that newspaper is going to become part of your project. <laughs> Okay. Squirrel paw prints are just as crazy as squirrels are. <laughs> I just looked up an image of uh, random paw prints on on uh, Google. It's the easiest way to do it. If you really wanted to. I know there's charts and stuff for sale on Etsy that have different paw prints. It should be kind of cool. Another thing you could do is to get um, a piece of leather or hide, um, rabbit hide or something like that. And you can paint paw prints of different types and label them on the back of that hide. Hang it up or have it on your desk. Again, this is kind of about connecting with nature when it's cold outside in the winter, like right now here, and there's snow on the ground, and you can go out and look at paw prints too, but, you know, it's this is... This is something that's more permanent unless you're taking photos of paw prints. And it's just something nice and soothing to connect with your animal. Be it dog, be it cat, be it fox, be it rabbit. This one's taken a little bit, kind of an odd shape. Sometimes I'll take Q-tips too if the area is big enough that I need to really get in there. Q-tips will work to dig out these larger spots like the pad of the paw. This takes a little bit more work if you're using the darning needle like I am. 
Okay, so that's that part. And then they have a little divot right here. The squirrels are crazy like that. Squirrel obsessed. Shush, shush, shush. <laughs> and then they have this little weird divot here too. And this one's more upside down V. And there's your squirrel print. So yeah, that's that one. Um, I was going to say too, with these finished ones, um, if you really wanted to, I think you could take a file or um, a needle, more sharper needle and um, carve, carve your uh, Therian symbol into that. But I just think painting goes a lot easier. Uh, let's um, maybe do one more. I think I'm going to do one that's more I'm not sure. <laughs> that's okay. It's okay to not be sure. You don't want to do too many things that are pointy on these either because it is paper clay um, until you get them covered in a coating they can be pretty brittle um, although this art clay creative art clay is one of the strongest ones out there um, i looked up what was going to be the best so this one is one of the best and so it will allow you to um, have a stronger piece, especially work in larger pieces, which we're not. I think this one, I am going to try to do more as a dragon. And we're going to do something a little different with the holes on it. This is a messy, messy job. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> it's going to be me. This could also be an interesting fox face one. <clears throat> so I'm just going to shape that a little more. Yeah. 
Let's do it more as a fox. I'm not going to do this one three-dimensional, anything carved into it. And I do on this, because it's going to be a piece that's worn, I want the ears to be a little thicker. Again, the point is to kind of have these a little bit more primitive looking. There we go. That's looking better. Again, if you don't like the shape, you can always sand it when it's dry. All right. Hey, Blue, how you doing, dear? Hi, coffee artist. <laughs> yeah, I'm just doing more primitive paper clay, air dry clay pendants today. There we go. Um, don't do, I mean, you can, you, if you do the holes through the ears to have like a uh, strand, go up from each ear make sure that you do it further down the ear and still go sideways because you're going to have a stronger hole okay one more time this way and wiggle And smooth it out a little bit. Make sure you get that hole worked enough that you'll be able to thread something through it. That's about, that'll fit a one millimeter something in there. So a cord. Um, you wouldn't be able to get chain mail through it, but this type of pendant you wouldn't be either this is also kind of a good shape base for doing like a cow skull or something like that and you can go more sculptural and more three-dimensional if you want but once this one dries i'll be doing this with paint okay I am a mess. <laughs> Thank you, coffee artist. They're just, they're fun. They're fun to make, and I get to be as messy as I want. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> um, but I think what I'm going to do is go over to painting, which means I'm going to have to go wash my hands. But again, the product I'm using is Creative Paper Clay. And this is the best one for strength that's out there. Um, but there are some tricks that I'm going to tell you about I won't be able to do today. But there's things to make it stronger and last a good long time. So I'll be right back. I just got to wash my hands. Do 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 Of a mess now. All right. I am less of a mess now. <laughs> 
So I got to pick out some paint here. That one. That one? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, green, what have I got sitting on the desk here? I'm only partly prepared. <laughs> well, you know. Okay, I got browns and blacks. Green, blue, brick, red, orange. Let's go with that. Brush water's clean. Fantastic. <laughs> now, to finish these, what you're going to be wanting to do, there's several different things you can try. Um, the easiest one for most people to get a hold of, of course, is to use clear nail polish to seal in the paint and that's fine you can use a clear acrylic uh varnish to finish it or you can use resin afterwards you do want to coat these because you want them to stay as sturdy as possible <laughs> thank you coffee artist it's important. People need to know how to do this stuff. And as I said, for reinforcing, you can get this at Walmart now. You can get it anywhere as the good old E6000. It's just hard to get in those places. So I prefer when I do resin to do them. But, um, you know, hopefully you're not pulling on these and, you know, trying to do tug of war with them. Second, I got um, Mountain Dew Zero here. I'm trying to caffeinate myself. I'm finally not getting massive migraines and stuff anymore. I had to switch off a of nearly 30 years of working night shift to day shift for my new job. It's like, oh my God. Okay, so here's... These guys are on Etsy, Forever Flower Crafts. Putting that on the stream so you guys can go find them. Um, I managed to get possum vertebrae. And so these I'm going to be using uh, to do as part of earrings along with the skunk jaw bones that my daughter got me. I am. I'm a little bit vulture culture, like uh, Lupa Green Wolf is and stuff, you know? Ick. What? <laughs> uh, uh, Rachel says that Stephen wears that, that chainmail bracelet a lot. He loves it. That was my first time doing that pattern. And, oh, my gosh. Well, you know, I kept messaging you going, I don't know if I could do this. It was just driving me absolutely bats. Mommy having trouble. That thing was hard. Yeah, you know what's going to be hard? Is if I can't find my paintbrush. Ah, there it is. Here we go. Okay. I don't have the rocks available or the um, pens for paint pens. You can use paint pens on these, but you want to do it um, not over top of acrylic and not over top of any sort of coating. Like if you have 
a rock coated in resin like this. I painted underneath the resin with regular acrylic paint, coated it, and if you have to go over top of resin, go acrylic paint again. Don't use the paint pens, they will not stick. Then you'd coat again with resin and that would seal it in. And you can do as many layers as you want. I did a pretty three-dimensional uh, turtle painting in layers of resin. Oh, you're welcome. I, I'm glad you guys love that bracelet. So I wanted to show this because if you wanna have a place for your den, um, you know, something, some sacred stone in there that's got your animal markings on it, a great way to do it is to just get any sort of rock that you really like. You can paint on it first, but if you resin it first, you can get a smoother surface um, with less divots in it to paint on. And that can make the painting a lot easier. But then again, after you paint it with the acrylics, resin it again and let it dry. And um, so you will have it sealed forever, pretty much. Um, so yeah, that that's something that can be fun to have in your sacred space or you know, your, your hide, hide away or anything like that. And you can paint on them anything you want. The acrylic pens, uh, the paint pens, of course, will work on a stone that has not been coated. Um, this one, they, um, my mother-in-law had this rock and they took acrylic paint over it first because this one, I think this rock might have been waxed. If you buy stones from a craft store, they are going to have a wax coating on them that the paint pens will not stick to. It's hideous. So don't buy the rocks from a, a store. You can get the little rounds of wood, and those are easy to put those, put those little uh, hooks into. You just screw them into the piece of wood. And you can make pendants or hangy things that way, or you can drill them or whatever you want to do. And the acrylic paint pens work very well on, on wood. But if you have a rock, don't have one that's coated or paint over top of it first, then use the paint pen and then coat with resin. But to finish these pendants off, once they're painted, you can use nail polish, you can use resin, or you can use uh, the acrylic varnish, um, either a matte varnish or a shiny one if you want. Depends on what you feel like doing. So I think, oh, those are the wet ones. Don't mix them up. All right, so what I think I'm going to do first <laughs> this is like playing with stones. I kind of like this. <laughs> All right, let's do the bear first. Um, not sure what colors I want to go with it. I think what I'm going to do is the terracotta. Oh. Problem with these paints getting older is they'll sometimes separate. And then the color doesn't lay down as nice. There we go. So there's terracotta. For the bare paw print. Uh, that's not going to be the right one. Uh, let's go with a mixture of dark green and black. Some of my paints, I'm going to have to get replaced colors. I do use these on canvas, too. I mix them with uh, professional paint colors, um, professional artist paints. Sometimes I want the more liquid paint, and, and these craft paints work just fine for that. And I'm able to get some brilliant color work with the craft paints. This is a really old one I found at a thrift store, so it's a bit more liquid than 
most would like. So that's part of why I'm mixing it with a thicker green. I'll give me a better bite. All right. And I need a thicker brush. Cats have been over everything. I have everything coated in cat hair. Ah. All right, so I just got this kind of brush. And let's grab our little uh, bear pendant here. This is where you're gonna get messy again. <laughs> and I forgot what I was doing. Okay, so thinner brush first. Let's mix these two colors together. I suppose I could have actually done the background color first. Probably would have been smart. Sometimes you make mistakes, and as Bob Ross said, they just end up being happy accidents. Oh, <laughs> Anyone who knows me, I, I grew up with Bob Ross and... My mom and I used to sit there watching him and going, oh God, no, don't put that tree there. Say for, say for to our sour, sorrow. God, I can't talk. Say Hi. No, no, sweetie, no. Oh God, no. <laughs> you said it. Say for... Say fort to our sour, sorrow. Hi. God, I can't spit that out. I'm trying to spit it. It's not spitting. Patooey. <laughs> Hi, random quadrobus. Welcome. Sounds welcome, random. welcome, welcome. Okay, we're, we're going to do this the proper way. Do the background color first on these because you've got it you know you've got it carved in it's going to come out a lot nicer <laughs> paint one side first of course let that dry and then you can work on the other side for anybody new just joining these are done with creative paper clay I had them air dry about a week. It is um, the best paper clay out there for strength. And um, I had a bunch left over from doing my dragon, from doing Hearn the Hunter's teeth and stuff. So um, I figured I'd make some pendants and so I started making pendants. And then I'm like, yeah, I'll live stream this. Because <laughs> one block of paper clay, even though it is a more expensive one, it um, does the job and you can make a lot of pendants with it to, you know, give away to friends or whatever, you know. Okay, so I gotta let that dry before I do the paw print. Um, let's throw a little yellow on that too, I think. So what I'm painting is pendants that I made. Uh, if you go back earlier in the stream, you know, later on, you can uh, watch where I've sculpted some. Uh, I've got a fox face, I've got a horse hoof print, a squirrel print, turtle shell, you know, just kind of random stuff today. But these are the ones that I had dried. So I just wanted to get these painted. And, you know, it's a cheap, easy craft for anyone who 
wants to connect with their animals some more. It's kind of primitive looking and I like that. And of course, if you use hemp, you can mix them with bone. You can do all sorts of stuff with, you know, when you're making the necklace to have bone beads on there. Oh yeah, I'm connected to feral cat, all right. I still catch myself hissing once in a while. Oh yeah, Wraith is so feral. <laughs> Can't go to the toilet without Wraith in my arms. Darn Bombays. Needy. Clingy. Do. Lovey and cute. He's very cute. Let's see, I'm not painting anything fantastic even, you know, nothing fancy, but blend it in a little bit if you want. It'll look really good once it's resined. These will look pretty amazing once they got the clear coating over them. Okay, so that one's a little too wet to work with now. All right. Let's do the deer print. This one's got the three-dimensional part on it. Oh, I'm still going to do the background first. Are you a feral baby? Oh, oh she's so feral. Yeah, Chell's very dangerous, feral. We joke about it because our kittens were feral when we got them. They didn't even have their eyes open, so Troy was bottle feeding them every two hours. <laughs> and Chell was, the, we called her the hissing peanut. She was so small, it was like drowning in the palm of our hands. And I brought them to the car, and the first thing she was doing all the way home was spitting. It was these little itty bitty kitty spits. And she, she almost didn't make it. She had a respiratory infection later and all sorts of stuff going on, but she is so spoiled now. Oh, my God. She's the one I took the videotape of um, her using my hairbrush. It's like, thanks, Chell. She's decided that's her hairbrush. Very spoiled cat. <laughs> she is spoiled. You tell her no. <laughs> Just because she has spa treatments. Yeah, pretty much. Just because she has mommy's hairbrush to have her Mommy daughter uh, grooming. <sighs> Crazy cat. I'm kind of deliberately leaving some brush strokes on this. Ah. Just to get a little bit rougher. A little bit more yellow right there. I want spring too. So once that's dry, then we'll do the footprint itself. So now, one of these rounded ones, 
<laughs> yes, kitties. Kitties rule the world. Rachel says, Seamus loves his nighttime brushing, and if he does not get his nightly brushing, he will have a tantrum. <laughs> That's chill. <laughs> Yeah, my, my black cat, Wraith, and Seamus are brothers from other mothers. Um, they're just very cute. They look exactly alike because they're both American Bombays. I'm looking up something else here. Don't look. Oh. Yeah. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I do have all those colors. Look at that. Oh, lovely. Okay. You can have all the colors. I can have all the colors I'd like, yes. All the colors. All the colors. Okay. Purple, 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 purple. Uh, let's go with a brighter green. Yes, they are. Seamus and, and Wraith are clones. That's That's got to be it. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I bumped the camera again. If I get a phone call, it's probably going to interrupt the stream. And there's not much I can do about it. Because for some reason, I've discovered on my iPhone that even putting it on Do Not Disturb, if you're active on YouTube, they will disturb you. <laughs> it's quite disturbing. It is very, very disturbing. This one will probably be the Therian symbol on the back side. So want to do the pride colors, just the basic ones. I'm not going through the entire flag. These were the first ones. Oh dear, some cat heard me talking about him and he wants out of the upstairs, which will be my art studio up there once we can figure out how to rearrange cat alone time. Wraith is on his own food because Dummy was eating uh, sheetrock. So um, Balam and Chell both like his food. And so getting everybody to eat is a royal challenge. And so we end up having to separate them because it used to be they were fighting a lot early on when he came back from the vet after his surgery. But um, it's gotten a lot better. Oh, did I not put blue down? I didn't put blue down. How did I not do that? Blue, there we go. Let's kind of keep them remotely wet. Blue, you're a terrible burden on your poor mother. No, blue is not a terrible burden on his mother. Well, you said to put him down. Oh, well, no, we're not going to put blue down. Well, just doing what you said. Blue's a character, and he, he plays the banjo, and he's pretty cool. I'm just, just doing what you said. <laughs> Oh, I forgot that purple was more metallic. Oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. 
All right, let's do this. Red, blue, more red. That's better. Not the best color purple. Still gonna look very rough. There's that one. Um, and this looks pretty dry, so we'll go with the smaller brush. And start doing the deer print. Again, this one is the three-dimensional one. Super deer print. It's a super deer print. Which also works like a heart, too. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Okay, so that's that one. Dub bear. Dub bear. The beer. Dub bear. My get cut and dub bear. <laughs> Okay. Oh, come on. Now it won't go in the hole. There. It went in the hole. It went in the hole. It went in the hole. Paint go in the hole. And my wife and I are regularly this bizarre. This is where I decided on future ones that I didn't want to do the dimensional claws into the claw marks into the clay because it's very hard to get the proper shape. to correct that right there okay that works so that's the bare claw print and what am I gonna do for the next one here we had this one was the fox I believe Uh, 
or something. Uh, She's just putting whatever in there. Yeah, that's more of the fox. Okay. Nope. And when I'm doing these that are more raised, it is a little easier to go with the lighter colors in the center so that the paw print itself stands out. just fills into the divots okay so if it did crack a little bit it's not a big deal <clears throat> if I keep doing this lowering my hand lower and lower I'm going to end up Covered in paint. <laughs> this one's not going to be the full rainbow color because I have to end with the light color in the center. No, because it's going to be red. I just thought of that. So we can go out a little further with the green. And sometimes you get water dripping down. It makes a little bit of a mess. This is a fun break from the precise painting that I normally do though. My hope this summer is to get the rocket stove set up because you if you build it the right way, you can actually use it for firing regular clay. If not, I found a place where I can get a bunch of clay stuff fired for $30 you, using a guy's kiln. And then, stop wiggling. And then um, I'll be able to use the ceramic glazes and fire again so i'm going to be doing a lot more primitive goddess pendants and stuff Old house, everything creaks. Okay, and red in the center. And I have to wiggle your brush in there because little tiny cracks in the clay doesn't always go in right away. Okay, so now we just got to let this one dry. 
think I got all the cracks covered. All right. Then we'll do the back of the deer. Again, because it's the front is yellow and green, I kind of want to keep the same theme on the back. Because the Therian symbol will be in black. And you kind of want to make sure that when you do your line work that it stands out. I was going to say, too, if you don't have paint, um, you can always use, like, a ballpoint pen and draw. It'll come out kind of like, um, oh, gosh, where they used to do the artwork, the ink work on um, whale bone and stuff. I can't remember what it's called now. Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw. It'll kind of look like Scrimshaw a little bit, which is pretty cool. Um, I think it should work. So what we can do is we can actually try it. Does not work with the Sharpie extra fine point pens. Already tried it. I do have a sh another Sharpie fine. I wonder if it would work with that. Let's just try. Uh, make sure I draw this right. Because then all I have to do is just, you know, use the nail polish or something and it's just fine. If you don't have a lot of supplies or just leave it without. It, I mean, whatever you have supplies to do, your project, it's okay. All right. Well, that's more detailed than I feel like doing, but we'll go for it. <gasps> well, if somebody did a all fancy schmancy one here. Just died. Oh my goodness. All my gear. Yeah, so this this works fine with a with a uh permanent marker, and in this case, you want to use a fine point one. What character are you on? My archer. Oh. My good bow. I want to this. The stuff is gone. So, as you can see, it kind of bleeds a little bit, but that's okay. It's a little rough and looks pretty fine to me. Drawing it like this, you're probably not going to have it perfect. And that's okay. I'm definitely not having this one anywhere near perfect. <laughs> Circle is not looking like a circle, even. <laughs> Whoops. That's okay. Looks like a poorly drawn Celtic knot. This is my first time drawing this, and normally I can do near perfect circles with just, you know, freehand, but that ain't happening now.
Okay. I'm eyeballing this off of my computer screen too. Yeah, see, I goofed on this. And then that, that, and and that. That doesn't look too bad. Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> Yeah, so the Sharpie markers, the ballpoint. Um, let's see, what shall we do on this one? Um, oh, let's see. Well, they have this, this chart's got a different uh, thing for deer pr paw prints or deer hoof prints. You'll find charts that have all different sorts of ways that it's done. Um, what's this one? I'm just looking right now. Deer hoof print should be a deer hoof print. There shouldn't be any differences. Uh, it depends on the pressure that the deer puts down, I guess, or how deep the snow is. Huh. Well, on um, where did it go? <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> I lost it a long, long time ago. Let's do a possum print because I just found one. That's impossible. It's impossible. Possums are such interesting critters. I got somebody that I follow on TikTok that possum moved into his garage. And he's carrying the possum around and it's drooling while he's petting it and uh, it's just funny. Good. Stupid reaper. Huh. And we've had several possums over the years that be in the garden and stuff and yeah, they do eat insects, but they do eat fruit and stuff, too. But the one neighbor kid thought he was going to be funny and chase, pick on the possum, so the kid ran off screaming because the possum was chasing him. <laughs> it was funny. I watched it, and I was just laughing. Like, that's what you get for picking on the possum. Yeah, see, this works really well with the fine point Sharpie. The extra fine point that I use for drawing in my sketchbook don't work very well on this clay. Kind of like that shadow in there like that looks kind of neat let's round that a little bit more okay 
And then I will probably edge this. Not sure with what yet. We could draw all sorts of leaves and stuff on there if we wanted to. And whatever, but that's done with a Sharpie marker. Works really well. And you can use the the fat points if you're doing a huge area too, but for the fine detail like that, you want to have the smaller print. So this was this was the regular fine point, and then don't use the extra fine. Second mouth gets dry. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe and all those good things. Anybody that's popping by later on. I thought I had a ballpoint pen here. Yes, I do. It's not a great ballpoint pen. I think this is a cheap Dollar Tree ballpoint pen. Let's give that a shot. So we don't quote me before, <laughs> before we say that I got stuff done. So... I'm not going to do the fancy schmancy. Okay, so the ballpoint pen is not going to work. You need a permanent marker. Or a cat. No, 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 Missy. Uh-uh. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so ballpoint pen is a no-go. Don't, don't follow that advice. Don't try and write with the cat. Yeah, don't write with a cat. Let's see. No, the most you're going to do is scratch into it. You're not going to write. And I just wrote on myself, so I know the ballpoint pen works on skin, but not, not on the paper clay. So let's do one more. Is that the one I want? It's the one you want. Mm -hmm. I'm the one you want, it's all I want to be. So come around, baby, make a move on me. Okay. Olivia Newton-John. That was off the same album as Physical. Okay. <laughs> well... <laughs> I was singing show tunes, so it doesn't matter. You know, we're both that odd. Yep. Uh oh. Wolf. Um. There's a new. You coming back? I get brr. Everybody's brring at me. Are you coming back? No, don't knock over my pot. Okay, so since I had already started with pen on this one, we'll just uh, do the Therian on the back or front. That's a nice thing about these is you can just flip them around however you want, you know, when you're wearing it. That was random. Okay. What's going on back there, miss? Do you have a spoiled cat, too? Yes. I have a lap kitten. You a lap kitten. You a lap kitten. Of course, these are very easy to make into, you know, if you want to do your own pentacles or anything like that, too. Um, these work just as well for that. Any sort of primitive style you're looking at. You're not at all feral. No. Oh, Chell's so feral, it's dangerous. Yeah. Especially, I have a short of Chell and my hairbrush that I uploaded yesterday. She comes from the mean streets. Yeah. That's what Grampy Lobster said. <laughs> Uh, not always because, Republic, because uh, 
keep in mind, I'm 56. I was doing a lot of that as a preteen and a teenager myself. It was, I went out into the woods. That was my escape. That's where I could connect with my animal totems. That's where I could be something else. So there were times I was out there as a wolf or a cat and just wandering. And I would be that way. I mean, I just felt like I was that animal. And... Some some people just are that way. But I'm doing. Is that what you're watching? You're watching your sister? She went that way? Okay. And while it may be a fad for some kids, for other ones it's not. And yeah, I still, you know, because of being my age, I kinda joke and call twenty somethings kids sometimes, but just ignore me. <laughs> Problem I just discovered with these fine point pens is you have to switch them out. Let them recover. Of course, I was one that was lucky enough to grow up with a lot of Chippewa and Lakota people on the horse farm. Um, and we, you know, had the horse shows and everything else. So I was, even from early on, as young as four, I was all a lot more in tune with all of that to begin with. That was just part of my life. And... Um, so I do have an Ojibwe name now. Got that in, oh gosh, my naming ceremony I think was in 2005. Okay, so there we go there. Let that pen recover a little bit. So yeah, just nice and simple. You can add different colors on there if you want. This one I'm gonna leave just plain like this, of course, because it is not easy to um, do these with, uh, like I said, getting the permanent marker over top of acrylic paint or a sealant, you're not gonna do it. And right now, I just wanna play with a permanent marker a little bit. The other thing, too, though, um, Republic, is that there are um, pagan shamans and stuff that actually will do the shifting into an animal form during ritual and stuff. Lupa Greenwolf has several books about doing that that she published a long, long time ago. Um, she also um, makes... Um, the uh, wolf hide headdresses and everything um, for those who can afford it. It is not cheap um, to be able to uh, shift and to do those sort of things. And so Therian, I think, kind of comes off of that shamanic practice a little bit, although some will argue with me about it. I would. It's it's younger younger ones who are trying to find themselves, I think, in some respects. And in our modern world, we, you know, living in the middle of the city and everything, we've, as 
as a culture, we've lost a lot of connection to that sort of thing. And so I think, you know, it's, it's a way of trying to find that connection to our natural selves and to the animals in the natural world again. Yeah, most of these kids wouldn't know a real wolf if it came up and bit them. Yeah, that's true. They go by popular mythology and what they see in culture, which isn't always accurate. Where I've been lucky to actually have had wolf mixes too you know my last one was husky and timber wolf mix half and half and she was a different different creature for sure This is just off a tattoo design that somebody else did. Oh. I thought it was kind of neat, so I'm gonna, I did it on here. Again, with the permanent marker. The only thing I do not have in permanent markers right now is red, and the eye was red. And I want to stick with that. Hello, wolves' eyes are more yellow, so let's do that. I take the paint and just go the yellow. And that's the thing, too. You can go with paint afterward if you want to do the, um, you know, do color around it or color it in or anything like that. Very easy to do after you've done the uh, pen work. Again, don't, don't use, uh, <laughs> do not use a uh, ballpoint pen. Now, the other thing I wanted to experiment on is this deer track one. I'm gonna try the ballpoint or the permanent marker over the paint. Barely, barely, barely. It doesn't do much. Okay, so that needs to be paint. <laughs> so I'll do the black and the green again. And I'm not doing a fancy symbol here. I have to be a lot more precise to be able to do the fancy symbols. The ones that come out more like not work. The actual theory and symbol with uh, not work is It is not work, the style it's done. And while that one's simple, it does have to be pretty precise. So nice and quick on that one. Background for the bear paw. Uh, what am I going to do? <laughs> Let's do red on the back. We'll keep the colors of fire and strength and power on this one. And 
like I said, if if you got some access to paint, you can do these on rocks. Just if you don't seal it on a rock, the paint will eventually come off. Although it's kind of funny, um, back in elementary school, I uh, had one teacher that had us painting on rocks and I decided to come home and I wanted to do a ladybug one. And so I got into my mom's oil paints. And that actually worked out really well because my mom still has that rock. <laughs> That's kind of funny. She's still got a lot of my art. I've got my daughter's art. I've got my son's little bit of art he did. He's more into music. He's not the... Um, visual arts. Uh, yeah, I blew that one. Oh, my gosh. If you make a mistake with acrylic paints, it's easy to fix. Not so easy in oils. Sandblaster. <laughs> no, not a sandblaster. Probably be easier to fix this when it's dry, but that's okay. Dynamite. No, no, dynamite. <laughs> that would fix it. <laughs> I would kind of fix it, yeah, but not the way I want it fixed. Picky. Well, I'm going to be picky. Yeah, this one I'll have to let dry and then go over with red again and then try again. Or I could do it in, in white if I really wanted to, but right now the colors would just bleed together. So not going to worry about that. Let's finish this one up. Um, yeah, get this one done. Then I'm probably going to have to call it. She's starting to get an upset stomach. Still going to Missy's? Yeah. I have to go fix a computer tonight. Well, it's just kind of fun being able to do some projects today and be live. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to start doing more live streams again. But I could not turn the job down. Just couldn't. Huh? Oh, dealing with training on the new job and everything. Oh, yeah. Was getting to where the I was going to have to take on two jobs with the old one. I'm sorry. Not your fault. It doesn't help that my old employer uh, was underpaying me severely, too found that out and they capped my pay while they were at it then I was supposed to get a promotion that didn't happen all sorts of things And then this job showed up, and it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. 
which I found on this level of nursing that I'm going to be able to make a lot bigger impact on more people at once. So that, that helps. Just the training takes quite a while. So what I'm gonna do with this one is probably when the black's dry, I'll take some white and do little highlights on here so it stands out a lot better. That was not a great color choice on my part, but if I do the white highlights, it'll be okay. And this one, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with that one yet. That one's still wet. Let's paint one of the goddesses. Yeah, I'm not going to open that paint tonight or today. I'm so used to doing streams at night. <laughs> This one, I'm just going to do the base color for now. So at least get her started. You want to make sure you work around those holes that you made. Uh, get that all covered. Again, you're going to do one side and then the other. Because you want to make sure that the, you know, the back side the front is completely dry before you flip the pendant over. Yeah. I love this terracotta color. It's pretty. And... I'll do this one in that color too. Mix it maybe with a little more red. I have plans for these. I have a cunning plan. Is this like the time that you... Don't tell me shut up, Baldric. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, we need to start watching Black Adder again. In case nobody's watched it, Black Adder with Rowan Atkinson. Hugh Laurie's in there. It's an older British comedy. It is funny. They go through uh, one family line throughout history, and it is great. Fourth season I wasn't the biggest fan of, but I still watched it because it's Black Adder, and yeah. All righty. Um, I think that will be about it. Um, last time I showed off one of my dragons. This one was polymer clay that somebody gave to me at a craft show years ago when I started doing craft shows. Um... Actually, I thought, I think I got this one when I was in Duluth yet. Um, yeah, so just a little bitty dragon. Really cute. He's old. I'm still hanging in there. So anyway, um, if you uh, catch this later, thank you for re-watching. And uh, there's tips throughout the video and throughout the live stream. And, um, you know, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. You know, I, 
I would like to get more subscribers and I, I do want to get back into this, you know, doing more live streams. So, um, that's the plan and you know, it's, I'm feeling better and life is finally coming back together. So that's, you know, the best time to do it. So anyway, thank you everybody for popping in. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. And I will talk to you later. Blessed be everybody. Take care and have a great day. And how do I stop this crazy thing? How do I stop it? Push the button, Frank. No, 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 no. Wait, what is going on here? I can't figure out how to stop it. That's not a joke. What the heck? Oh, dear. I swear I go through this every time, you guys. Okay, so it's got to be this button right here. <laughs>